When Ibrahim a.s. realized that the Egypt is not the place to stay in, he migrated from Egypt to Palestine. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opened the doors of blessings to Ibrahim a.s. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa la amma ba'd. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open to him his gates of wealth. They had lots of barakah and blessings in their business. He had so much sheep and he had so much in terms of wealth and he became quite a wealthy person. But there was one thing missing in Ibrahim's life. Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam is married to our mother Sarah. One year of marriage passes and there is no child. And the Khalil of Allah turns to Allah and begs Allah, Rabbi habli min as-saliheen. Oh Allah, I beg you, give me a pious son. Two years of marriage pass and there is no child. And Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam makes this dua. Oh Allah, give me a pious son. Give me a righteous son. Five years of marriage pass. And there is still no child. And Ibrahim is still making dua. Rabbi habli min as-saliheen. Ten years of marriage pass. And there is still no child. And Ibrahim is still making the dua. Rabbi habli min as-saliheen. Fifteen years of marriage pass. Twenty years of marriage pass. Twenty-five years of marriage pass. Thirty years of marriage pass. The years are passing by. There is no child. Allah is not responding. Allah is not answering the dua of Sayyidina Ibrahim. But Ibrahim a.s. keeps on bowing. Ibrahim a.s. keeps on crying. Ibrahim a.s. keeps on asking. He keeps on making dua. Rabbi habli min as As every day passes, Sayyidina Ibrahim a.s. is becoming older. As every day passes, Sayyidina Ibrahim a.s. is becoming weaker. Slowly but surely, the color of his hair are changing. Our mother Azat Sara Azatsara, has now got to an age in which women normally do not give birth. But look at the level of Iman of the Khalil of Allah. When it came to Sayyidina Ibrahim a.s. There was no such thing as despairing. Why should Sayyidina Ibrahim a.s. despair? Ibrahim a.s. knew one that loses hope in the mercy of Allah. This individual is a loser in the dunya. And this individual is a loser in the akhirah. Why should he lose hope in the mercy of Allah? Ibrahim was making dua. To the Allah that is the Lord of the heavens and the earth. The Allah that is the Lord of the Arsh and Kursi. The Allah that is the Lord of the entire universe. The Allah that is the Al Qadir that has the power to do as He pleases, whenever He pleases. He was making dua to the Allah that can make the impossible possible. When He's at the age of 80, Allah reveals a whole set of laws, a whole Sharia. Ah. And Ibrahim is told in this set of laws, he is given the Abrahamic covenant that all true followers of Abraham are told to fulfill. He is told to circumcise. He is the only believer. There is no other believer that can circumcise him. And so at the age of 80, our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu tells us, as an 80 year old man, when the laws come down, he circumcises himself. So Sarah, so and felt Ibrahim is loving to have a child. And he's 85 years old. And the unfortunate thing is Ibrahim didn't have a child because Sarah was barren. She doesn't give birth. So Sarah felt that it's time for her to give something back to Ibrahim. So she gave his slave, Hazar, a present to Ibrahim. His Hazar or Ibrahim take her. She is yours now, get married to her, have children from her, may Allah bless you and her and us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed that to happen and Ibrahim alayhi salam took accepted Hazar and then married her. Then one day my young friend, at the age of 86, the dua of Ibrahim was accepted. At the age of? 86, the dua of Ibrahim was accepted. And who was Ibrahim? The Khalil of Allah. The Khalil of Allah, the near and dear friend of Allah, Allah befriended him. And his dua has been accepted at the age of 86. The child is now born. And the name of this child is Ismail. My young friends, Ismail has come into the world. 
Sarah. Now when she saw Ibrahim spending a lot of time with Ismail, and he's the mother of Ismail Hajar, and the attention now is taken away from Sarah to Ismail and Hajar, jealousy starts to play. And Sarah will get so jealous that she could not even stand Hajar or the son of Hajar Ismail. And then the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come to Ibrahim. Allah Azza wa Jal ordered Ibrahim alayhi salam to take Hajar and his new baby born Ismail in the middle of a valley by the name of Makkah where there's nothing there and leave him alone and come back to Sarah. Now Makkah, my young friends, wasn't like what Makkah is today. Makkah was a barren desert. There was nothing in Makkah. No houses, no trees, no buildings, nothing. No water, nothing. The only thing that you would find in Makkah in those days was burning heat, scorching heat, burning sun, and mountains that have become black because even they can't tolerate the heat. The order of Allah came and that's enough. He took them when Hajar did not know what the plan was. When they reached the middle of the desert, which is where Mecca is today, right near the Kaaba, which is built today. There was nothing there, but they settled down with a bit of water and a bit of food. Suddenly, Ibrahim salam stood up, turned his back and began to walk the other way. Hajar walked up to him and said, Ya Ibrahim, he didn't reply. Ibrahim, he didn't reply, kept walking. She knew something was wrong. She said, are you leaving us? He kept walking. Ibrahim salam did not answer. He kept looking to the ground, not even looking at her and walking straight ahead. And Hajar calls out, Oh Ibrahim, where are you going? Oh Ibrahim, where have you left us? There is nobody here, there's no food, there's no water. And Ibrahim, can you imagine every father amongst us? He hears his son crying. He hears his wife begging and pleading. He has been told by his Lord to leave them. He continues walking and Hajar understands that this tender man, this loving father, this husband would never do this unless his Lord has told him. And so Hajar asks him, O oh Ibrahim, has Allah told you to do this? Finally, Sayyidina Ibrahim salam responded and said, Yes. Hajar said, Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not neglect us. That's it. She didn't talk with him further. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told you to do this? Yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of us. He will not neglect us. This is the Iman. This is the Iman of this mother Hajar, the mother of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa This is her Iman. He continues to walk. And when he gets to a place where she can no longer see him and Ismail can no longer see him, Sayyidina Ibrahim Islam turns to Allah. Oh Allah, I've left my only child. Oh Allah, I've left my wife in this barren land. Oh Allah, there's nothing here, nothing grows here. There's not even water in the Baytik al-Muharram right next to your sacred house. Why? So that they establish Salah. Oh Allah, I beg you, fill the heart of some from amongst men with love towards them. And oh Allah, give them Salah, give them fruits, so that they may be grateful. The hearts of believers are pulled over. Why? Dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ya Allah, turn the hearts of the people to them. And he left them there. Then he went back to his other wife back in Sham. And some ulama, they say he came back after 10 years. No mobile phones, text messages, Skype, <laughs> Viber, WhatsApp. Uh, 10 years, no contact. And her husband is leaving her alone. A helpless mother. Hajar sat down. She would breastfeed him and she would eat from that dates and drink from that water until she ran out of dates and ran out of water and ran out of milk. Now Sayyidina Ismail is crying and weeping. Ismail was curling on himself because of the hunger and he was hitting the ground with his feet and he was crying as if he was dying. At that moment Hajar could not sit down any further. Even there is nowhere to go but she couldn't handle seeing her child dying in front of her eyes. So she went on top of a mountain that was close to her. She climbed that mountain and that mountain is Asafa. She looks from the top of the mountain if she can see anyone. She saw no one 
walked down the mountain and she ran through the valley and then she climbed another mountain the name of that mountain is al marwa and she go to the top of the mountain looking around if she can see anyone she saw no one and she walked down the mountain ran through the valley climbed down as safa again so she goes to the mountain of marwa the mountain of safa the mountain of marwa the ma- she goes back and forth seven times and these very days the pilgrims Three million of them will commemorate that walk that she gave between Safa and Marwa, back and forth, back and forth. Subhanallah, Sayyidatina Hajar at that moment was afraid, had fear in her heart. She was running with worry. If she knew what will happen, she would be climbing those mountains with big smile on her face. If she knew that the nations of the world, millions and millions of them, are going to follow her tracks and follow her sunnah and follow her way she would be making that trip with a big smile on her face when she got on top of al marwa that's the end of seventh climbing she heard a voice so she said quite who is she speaking to she is speaking to herself out of confusion she is telling herself be quiet and then she is trying to listen she heard a voice again and she addresses the voice i beg you reveal yourself if you can help me i beg you help me she saw an angel leader of the angels jibril alayhi salam descended specially to that spot where ismail alayhi salam is laying down and the angel started picking up the dirt with his wing or with his foot until water started flowing from the ground a spring of water gushing from nowhere she looked at it and she thanked allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and she wanted to gather the water so she created a basin like structure with her hands with the muddy sand and she began to say in the language zam 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 it means stop 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 because we want to now take you and drink you so you stop to this day we have this water known as zam zam from the same well rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam says if hajar would have left it alone it would have been a flowing river to this day we cannot explain how so much water is coming for the city of mecca how millions of pilgrims throughout the year come and the water never finishes the water never finishes it is a unceasing well of water that has lasted for the last 4000 years in the in the city of mecca now sayyidatina hajar has water but she doesn't have food she doesn't have company so she still needs the social needs and the psychological needs and when water exists in a place life starts so animals start to come around and everything starts to revolve around it and at that time there was a big civilization taking place in Yemen and the people of Yemen had a great flood so they migrated to Yemen and they were looking for another place to live in and when someone wants to live in a place the first thing they want to see is is there water around so while well, there was a tribe by the name of jurhum and jurhum is one of those arab tribes they were traveling through the arabian peninsula they saw in the sky birds hovering birds in the desert means water they said we know that there is no water over there so what are these birds doing so they sent one or two men to go and investigate So the men went rushing they came back with a good news that there is water in the middle of the desert they were very very amazed they came they knew this is a miracle so they asked the woman would you allow us to camp here these are a group of men fighters in the middle of the desert taking permission from a woman and her child if they wanted they could have eliminated her with a move of a hand with a strike of a sword but they were very noble and they got a strange answer she said yes but you have no rights in the water the water belongs to us we'll allow you to drink from it but it's our property not yours so you can drink and benefit but subhanallah it is not yours to this day zamzam is not sold to this day it belongs to us all we can drink from it because that zamzam is for the ummah of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam but they accepted 
They say yes, we agreed. And that is how Jorhum came to stay in that area. And that is the beginning of the settlement. And then they lived there. And civilization started to take place in Mecca. And life started to take place in Mecca. Ismail alayhi salam grew up among these people. And as the child grew, they taught him Arabic. They were pure Arabs. And as he grew up, his father used to come and go. His father, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, when he came back at one stage, he'd seen, mashallah, this is the setup. And he was quite happy with it. And he used to come and he used to go. He would love him. He would kiss him, embrace him, play with him. He would do as a normal father does with his child. Every day this child is growing and growing and this bond is becoming stronger and stronger and stronger. And now he becomes a young adolescent. He starts to help his father. He is running around. He is helping his father. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, he sees a dream. And the dreams of the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam, are true. They are revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What does he see? He sees that he is sacrificing, he is slaughtering his son, Allahu Akbar. It was a test to see who he loved more, Allah or his son. Can you imagine at the age of 95, at the age of 95, one son he has. He thinks he's about to die in a few years, he has no progeny left. The amount of love he must have for this child. And as soon as he saw this dream, look at the level of Iman. Without questioning Allah, without thinking, without pondering, without making mashwara from his wife Hajar or any other family member, immediately he approaches Sayyidina Ismail and says, Oh Ismail, this is the dream that I saw. I saw that I was offering you in sacrifice. Tell me, what is your opinion? Ismail didn't say, What sort of dad are you, man? <laughs> You left me and my mom back here in the jungle and then you went away. You didn't give any care in the world about us. And now you come back and you telling me you want to slaughter me? What sort of dad are you, man? Ah, <laughs> uh, no. That wasn't Ismail. Ismail alayhi salam. He's no ordinary child. This wasn't my child or your child. This was Ismail. Sadiq al wa'd Allah says in the Quran. Sadiq al wa'd Sayyidina Ismail salam said, O oh Father, do whatever you have been commanded. You will find me from amongst those who are patient. So Ibrahim walked away and he took his son and his son followed his father. And so he lays him down and he raises the axe, he raises the sword. And of course, Shaitan appears in front of him. And Shaitan says, have you gone crazy? Have you gone mad? He is your only son. What are you doing? How can you kill him? And so he pelts him with seven stones and shaitan goes away. So Ibrahim doesn't want to remain in the same place. So he goes to another place to make sure shaitan doesn't come back. Once again, shaitan comes back. Once again, he pelts him with seven stones. And once again, he takes him to another place. And those three places, Jamrat al-Kubra, Jamrat al-Sughra, Jamrat al-Wusta, to this day, the very point that Ibrahim alayhi salam tried to sacrifice his son, we commemorate it. The pilgrims commemorate it. They will commemorate it three days in a row. They're going to stone these pillars as a symbol that shaitan will never cause me to come between me and the commandments of Allah. And then they come to a big rock. Surabu to put Ismail, to lay Ismail on it and to slaughter him. And subhanAllah, ya ikhwani, look what Ismail told his father at that time. Oh my father, tie me with a belt so I do not shake. Because if I shake, your heart will soften. And at the same time, keep your clothes away from my blood. Because if your clothes are covered with my blood, when you return, if my mother is to see this, it will sudden my mother. My mother will not be able to bear and tolerate. And when you return home, convey my salam to my mother and remind her of the reward of the Sabirin. Sayyidina Ibrahim والسلام, naturally began to cry. And he said to his son, how helpful you are my son. Ibrahim is crying. Ismail is crying. The angels in the heaven are crying. And Allah is addressing the angels. Ya Malaikati, 
O oh my angels, look at this servant of mine. Is he now worthy of being the Khalil? Is he now worthy of my friendship or not? And the angels reply in one voice, O oh Allah, if we were in the position and place of Ibrahim, then we would not be able to exercise such patience that Ibrahim has exercised. Initially, he placed him on his back. And Ismail السلام, said to him, Father, place me so that you don't see my face and compassion hits you and you can't carry out the sacrifice. So he placed him on his forehead, upside down, his face down to the ground. And he placed the knife on his neck. Suddenly, with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the knife refused to cut. He tried again. And Ismail السلام, kept on saying, Harder, Father. Maybe you're not putting enough pressure. Allahu Akbar. And when they were confused in that state, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala finally says, acknowledging one of the best acknowledgements of great honor. Oh, Ibrahim, you had already fulfilled the vision that you saw. This is enough. Oh, Ibrahim, you had submitted and surrendered to Allah. This was a very severe test for you. Allah says in the Quran, we redeemed this sacrifice with a momentous sacrifice, an extraordinary sacrifice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down from the heavens a sheep as an alternative to slaughter that sheep, and not Ismail. A male sheep, a white ram that had big eyes and huge horns, thick wool, very white in color, full of meat, large shoulders, and he sacrificed his lamb in place of his child. We can't even visualize in our minds just 1% of the sacrifice that Sayyidina Ibrahim made. After this event happened, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we left salam for Ibrahim in the generations to come. We are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant Ibrahim salam peace in every salah. Millions and millions of believers all over the world, throughout generations, five times a day and more, are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant Ibrahim alayhi salam peace. The mother passed away, Hajar, and then Ibrahim alayhi salam would make some visits. Ibrahim alayhi salam is traveling always. So he visited Makkah, and he came back to the house of Ismail alayhi salam, and he knocked the door. So his wife opened the door. He looked at her, and... He asked her, how is your condition? Where is your husband and what is he doing? Firstly, she didn't know who he was. Secondly, she began to complain. No, he leaves us here. He goes away and he, we don't really have much. You know, we're struggling and so on. So Ibrahim salam said, deliver my salams to him and tell him to change his doorstep. Ismail salam came home and Rasulullah says, as if he felt something, subhanallah. He felt that his father was there and he asked his wife, Did anybody visit us? She said, Yes. An old man came and he asked about you. And he told me to deliver salam to you and to tell you to change your doorstep. Ismail salam said, That was my father and he is ordering me to separate from you. You are the doorstep. And he divorced her. Now where was she from? She was from Makkah. She was from the tribe of Jurhum. People of Jurhum, they loved Ismail so much. They married him another wife. After some time, Ibrahim salam came back. Exactly the same thing. He knocked the door. The door was opened. Ismail was in there. So he asked the same question to the wife. He said, tell me about your living. She said, Alhamdulillah, the best living. And she praised the lifestyle that they are leading. The simple lifestyle that they were leading. She praised it. She was happy and condemned righteous woman. So Ibrahim salam wanted to get more details. He said, what food do you eat? She said, we eat meat. What do you drink? Water. That's all what they used to have, meat and water. So he made dua for them and said, oh Allah, give them blessing in their food. And then he said, when your husband comes back, deliver my salam to him and tell him to keep the door step. So Ismail salam came back. He said, Did anybody visit us? She said, Yes, an old man came and he is delivering you salam. And he is saying, Keep your door step. So he said, That was my father telling me to keep you as a wife. You are a good woman. Alhamdulillah. 
and the angels will come to Ibrahim alayhi salam one day. Mikael, Jibreel, some narration says Israfil, other narration says the angel of death. Three angels will come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the appearance of human beings. And they'll come to Ibrahim alayhi salam when he was in Palestine. And they say to Ibrahim, Salam, peace be upon you. So Ibrahim alayhi salam responds back, Peace be upon you too, people that we don't know. When they came in, he asked his wife, Do you know them? No, we don't. Okay. He looks at them and he wanted to serve them something. From the qualities of Ibrahim was that he was generous. Allahu Akbar. So he went back into the house and he asked his wife, is there anything to eat? She says, well, we've got a little bit of meat here. He says, no, let's slaughter a calf, a nice fat calf we find at the back there. He slaughtered it and he ordered his servants to cook it and on the spit properly and they brought the whole calf. For how many people? Three people. There were just three of them. Look at how hospitable he was. And he forwards the food to them. And Ibrahim alayhi salam sits down to eat. And he's amazed. You know, these people, they traveled, must be hungry. They're not even interested to eat. So Ibrahim got scared. So he started eating a little bit in order to try and encourage them. And when he saw that they were, they were sort of putting their hands forward, grabbing the meat, and they were acting like they were eating, the food would not actually enter their mouths. He sensed something amiss. Something was wrong. So immediately he told him, hey, you know what? I'm starting to get a doubt. What, who are you here? You know, what's happening here? So they said, don't fear Ibrahim. We are not human beings. We are angels. Allah sent us with two missions to come to you to give you some news and to go and destroy the people of Lut. Who was listening? His wife, Sarah. When she heard, she started laughing. Laughed in the sense that finally something is being done about the people of Lut. And they turned to her. And then we said to her, you will have a child. Sarah, at that moment, she was 90 years old. And when she was young, she couldn't get children. Now when she's old, she's going to get children. And how old is Ibrahim alayhi salam? Ibrahim at that moment, he was 120 years old. She started to say, what? And she started to touch her face. I'm going to give birth and I'm an old woman. And my husband is even older than me. How would this be possible? So she said, this is amazing. Amazing. This is absolutely amazing. They told her, are you amazed from Allah's matter? What's this compared to what Allah can do? You are amazed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's matter? Well, there is another good news for you. Not only that you'll fall pregnant and you'll get Ishaq, you will even live long enough until you see the son of Ishaq Yaqub. The mercy of Allah and his blessing be upon you, O family of Abraham. Surely he is worthy of all praise and full of all glory. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Immediately when he understood that they are going to destroy the people of Lut, immediately look at this humble, forbearing man. These were from his qualities. His character came out. And immediately he said, Inna fiha Luta. That why are you going there when Luth is there? Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. And the angels responded, Nahnu a'lamu biman fiha. We are more knowledgeable about who's there. So they said, look, O Ibrahim, let's not talk about that. You just turn away from that discussion because it is the instruction of Allah that they will be destroyed and that punishment will come and it is not going to be reversed. And it's not his business to worry about the people of Lut and these angels that Allah has sent to them. But he makes it his business. Allahu Akbar. Because of how soft he is. And how generous he was. And how forbearing he was. And how humble he was. La ilaha illallah. Because he's so full of mercy. He begins to argue with the angels. Spare them. Give them some more time. They might, they might repent. Even though Allah had decreed punishment upon them, Ibrahim's heart was so merciful, so tender. That's exactly what Allah says in the Quran. Innahu kana awahan. He was a person who was a tender hearted man. So he was reassured that Lut would be saved. And he was reassured that the people who had believed would be saved. And then 
he had bidded farewell to these particular angels and they left in their own way. And the days went past and then another order comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Ibrahim alayhi salam in a moment, in a time, in an era where no one or hardly anyone was saying la ilaha illallah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will order Ibrahim alayhi salam to build a house that we know by the name of Kaaba in the middle of the valley of Mecca as the symbol of the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Ibrahim alayhi salam will go to the valley of Mecca. And he'll see Ismail alayhi salam. And he'll say to Ismail, O oh son, Allah had ordered me an order. So Ismail will say, O oh, oh, oh dad, do what, you, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had ordered you to do. So Ibrahim told Ismail, And would you help me? So Ismail said, Yes, I will help you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent an angel that showed Ibrahim alayhi salam the place where Ibrahim must build the Kaaba. And there is narrations that says that Ibrahim was instructed by Jibreel on how to build the Kaaba. So Ibrahim alayhi salam was the builder and Jibreel was the architect. And Ismail was the laborer. And they start to build the Kaaba. And Ibrahim alayhi salam will put the foundations of the Kaaba. And Ibrahim alayhi salam will build the Kaaba. And Ismail will put the bricks together, he will collect the rocks, and he will come to his father, and Ibrahim will lay the rocks down. And where there were rocks over rocks, there was no cement or mud, there were just rocks over rocks, and Ibrahim alayhi salam continued to build the Kaaba until... It was too high for him to go more longer or higher, to go more higher in the building. So he asked his son to get a high rock that he could stand on. And Ismail will bring this rock. And Ibrahim will stand on that rock, barefooted. And from the long standing on that rock, Ibrahim's foot will go deep into that rock. And that rock and that place is where Allah says, this is Maqam Ibrahim. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala miraculously caused a specific rock that he was standing on to go slightly higher. And he placed it. Then it would come slightly lower. He would get the, the, uh, the next one. Then it would go slightly higher. He would place it. Then it would come low. They knew that this is Allah. It is the house of Allah. He has shown us one too many times that definitely he's with us. And while they were building, they were making dua. Oh Allah, accept this humble effort of ours. You are the all hearer. You are the all knower. Oh Allah, make us obedient. Oh Allah, make us Muslim. Oh Allah, give us the tawfiq to worship you as you should be worshipped. Oh Allah, take out from my progeny an ummah that will be Muslim. And accept our repentance. You are the one that accepts the repentance. And then he said, Oh Allah, Oh Allah, from among them, Send them Rasulan, a messenger that will call them to your religion and teach them your book. How many? One Rasul. Because Ibrahim salam, has done so many sacrifices, so that one Rasul should be the mighty Rasul. And that Rasul should be a universal Rasul. And not just a universal Rasul, but Imam al wa Rasul. Khatamun Nabiyin Rahmatulil Alameen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam and sent to this ummah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. And now the Kaaba is built. But every corner of the Kaaba, four corners, they all look the same. So if you want to start circulating around the Kaaba, where are you going to start from? So Ibrahim told his son Ismail, O oh son, go and find me a rock different from all the rocks that you see to put it in one corner to distinguish that corner that this is the beginning of the Kaaba. After this order to his son, Ismail was so tired from working during the day and night and building the Kaaba. So he told his father, Oh father, I feel a bit lazy, tired. So Ibrahim told him, get up and go and do this. So Ismail got up. An order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his father, he went. 
After a while, Ismail comes back. And he sees his father carrying this white rock to put it in a corner. But this rock, where did it come from? It's not a common rock that you could find anywhere, especially in the area. So he told him, oh father, where did you get this white rock from? He said, I got it from the one that doesn't need you or gets lazy. Jibreel got it from me from the heavens. And that's the rock that we call the black rock. And now it's black. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, it was white and it became black from the sins of people. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he tells Ibrahim, the Kaaba has been built, now call people to come and visit the Kaaba. So Ibrahim looks around, who's there? Who's going to come? There's no one around. So he said, oh Allah, where is my voice going to reach to? Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam asked Allah, Oh Allah, indeed, I will carry out your command. Oh Allah, but I'm here in Mecca. There's no one that lives in Mecca. Mecca is a barren desert. People live hundreds and hundreds of miles away. Thousands of thousands of miles away. In different corners of the globe. Oh Allah, I will make the call. But these people will not be able to hear my call. Oh Allah, who will convey the sound of my voice to these masses? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds, O oh Ibrahim, minka al-adhan wa aliyya al Your job is to make the call. My job and responsibility is to convey the sound of your ma- voice to the masses, wherever they may be. Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam, he climbs Mount Abi Qubais, and then he faces the north, and then he faces the south, and then he faces the east, and then he faces the west. Every time he makes the call, O oh people, your Lord has made himself a house in Mecca tun wa Come and visit the house of your Lord. Come and perform the Hajj, come and perform the Umrah, come and perform the uh, Tawaf. Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam, when he made this call, not only did Allah convey the sound of his voice to all those that were living on the dunya, wherever it may be, even though they were living thousands and thousands of miles away from the sacred house and the blessed city of Makkah al Bakarama, not did only Allah convey the sound of his voice to every single person on the earth. Allah conveyed the sound of his voice to all those that were in the heaven. Allah conveyed the sound of his voice to those that were not even born, to those that didn't even come, and those that were to come right till the day of judgment. Allah conveyed the sound of his voice to every single one. And when they heard the call and cry of Ibrahim, they began to respond one after the other. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik. Oh Allah, I am here. Oh Allah, I am here. Oh Allah, I am here. Our beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Today people are performing Hajj according to how many times they responded to the call and cry of Ibrahim. And to this day that house is venerated by billions of people around the world. They face it when they pray. To this day, every single year, hundreds of millions of pilgrims perform the Umrah and the Hajj. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Ibrahim, I will make you an Imam, a leader for mankind. Someone who will be a role model for everyone to follow. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about him, We made all the prophets after him from his descendants. All of the envy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Rusul that came after Ibrahim were from the descendants of Ibrahim alayhi salam. The description of Ibrahim alayhi salam's features is interesting. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, I have seen Jesus the son of Mary and Moses and Abraham. I saw them. He saw them, Allah showed him to them. As for Jesus, alayhi salam, he was red, red skinned, of curly hair and broad chest. Describes him this way. Musa, alayhi salam, was of tanned skin and big body and he had rough hair. The companions asked, What about Abraham? Ibrahim, alayhi salam. He said, Unzuru ila sahibukum. Look at your man, meaning himself. The closest description for you is to look at me and that is what Ibrahim alayhi salam looked like. He looked similar to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Ibrahim alayhi salam went back to Palestine. And Ibrahim alayhi salam lived the rest of his life in Palestine. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Ibrahim the suhuf, the chapters 
and Ibrahim alayhi salam passed away aged 175 and he was buried by his two sons Ismail and Ishaq in the Khalil in Palestine sallallahu ala Ibrahim alayhi salam now we move on to Ishaq and Ismail the older one is Ismail may peace be upon him the younger one is Ishaq not much has been mentioned in the Quran about both of them besides the story of Ismail alayhi salam prior to him having been granted prophethood by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after that Allah makes mention of very few qualities of him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says make mention of the prophet Ismail in the book he was very very truthful to his promise he used to fulfill his promises and he was sent and he was also granted scriptures he used to constantly remind his family members to fulfill salah and to purify themselves giving charity and he was one whom Allah was pleased with and Ismail alayhi salam got married from the tribe of Durham and then descendants and offspring uh, came and took place in the uh, valley of Mecca from Ismail alayhi salam and he passed away in Mecca and he was buried in Mecca and from the offspring Quraysh comes and from Quraysh Hashim comes and from Hashim Abdul Muttalib and Abdul Muttalib is the grandfather of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's descendants where does it go back to? it goes back to Ismail as for Ishaq alayhi salatu wa salam Ishaq lived in Palestine where his father was and Ishaq had a son, his name is Ya'qub. Ya'qub, his other name is Israel. So this is where Israel comes from. Now who comes from Israel or Ya'qub? Twelve children. From those twelve children, ten come from one mother, two come from another. Those two come from another is Yusuf and Benjamin. Those twelve children are the twelve tribes of Bani Israel. The children of Israel go back to those twelve children. Now, and Ishaq alayhi salam, he lived in Palestine. He called to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah azza wa jal took his soul in the Khalil. Khalil is the same place as Ibrahim alayhi salam passed away and he was buried in the Khalil in Palestine. And remember when we were speaking about the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam, we mentioned Lut. So Lut is part of the story of Ibrahim but in a different area. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had had a plan for the Prophet Lut alayhi salam. Lut alayhi salam on the way was ordered through inspiration to go to the most corrupt city at that moment. It was by the name of Sadum. Sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad subhanallahu bihamdih subhanakallahumma bihamdika nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayhi.